Um, I came along tonight, I came up from Adelaide, I'm in the office uh, five days a week normally when I'm not out touring around and uh, we had 18 mil just as an aside, this is what country people always talk about, the weather, the rain. <laughs> um, we had 18 mils of, of rain in about half an hour, uh, just poured about two o'clock this afternoon and there was some minor flooding around but by the time I got home here to Williston uh, it was as dry as a bone so I gather you haven't had any rain today. First thing country people talk about when they meet is the weather. It gives me pleasure tonight to uh, enlighten you about the history of CWA in Gawla. I'm going to incorporate a few other things with it about what's happened around the state um, that go because Gawla is part of the South Australian Country Women's Association, the Gawla branch, and it was formed in 1940. The association, to just to set the scene for you on how the branch came to be formed, the association was first formed in 1929 by Mrs Mary Warnes from Old Coomaloo Station, east of Burra. Now, 1926, Mrs Warnes actually started the Burra branch, but the association wasn't incorporated until 1929 as a state association. Mrs Warnes found the living out on the station as she did. Of course, the men from the stations went into Borough, to the markets. Um, their wives, they went in the buggies in those days and whatever um, way that they could go because there were very, very few vehicles or anything around at that stage. But they travelled in, their wives with them, and if they had children, the men went off to the markets. Now, I grew up in the upper north, uh, and the same thing used to happen in my family. We travelled up to Peterborough Markets, and uh, Father would go off to the markets for the afternoon, and of course my mother and us children were left to our own devices. Well, years ago, it was not so easy. And if you can imagine, Borough, back in those days, was a hive of activity too. So they used to go into the markets and the women were left to their own devices to fill in the time in the street, often with small children, while the men folk were at the markets. She saw a need for somewhere for women to be able to take their children, uh, feed and um, change them, and for women to be able to make a cup of tea and enjoy a chat and friendship while the men folk were at their markets. So hence, that is the reason why the South Australian Country Women's Association was formed, for friendship and support for women and their families. It is no different today, and in 1940, the Gawla branch was formed. It was formed, there were 60 members at the first, 60 women from the district at the first public meeting, and they decided, yes, they would form a branch, the Gawla branch of the Country Women's Association. Over the years, there has been many, many different activities that those women have performed. Uh, I feel terribly humble when I think of the way that, um, like the lifestyle that there was then. I feel dreadfully humble when I think of the hard work that those women and men folk, everyone in the early years, did to earn a living. It was not so easy as it is today. On the 3rd of April, 1940, it was when the branch was formed, and it says here 65 members. I'm going from memory, and my notes say 65 members. I don't use a lot of notes. Um, June 9, 21st, 1940, um, the, the hall was opened um, by Mrs. Hutt. I don't think that's 1940. I think that's a, it came after that. Um, but I'm just going by rough notes here that we're, we have from different sources. The hall, when it was built, um, there, was, there was a block of land purchased in Reed Street. The CWA met in a lot of different areas before uh, the hall was actually built. And I'll go by this one because this is the one that I, that I took down myself. Um, the first... June the 21st, 1940, seen what must have been one of the greatest events in the early years, the opening of the first restroom. The second restroom, these were not owned by the branch, these were opened in various places. The second restroom, because they were called restrooms in those days, used by the branch, was a room in the town hall in Murray Street. 
until in July 1947, a rent-free space on top of Mr Hogburn's shop was made available. So it was back then a community effort. When an organisation started, um, they kind of moved most times from place to place, uh, wherever they could find space that really didn't cost very much. Because the South Australian Country Women's Association is a not-for-profit voluntary service organisation. It's primarily for friendship and support for women and their families, and to help in their local community and to people in need in the local and wider area. During the early years of the CWA, members devoted their activities to war work, because if you can think back to 1940, the war started 1939, so it was right in the midst of the war. There were many, many things that were done then. Um, there was the camouflage nets, CWA. Did any of you know that CWA were the official camouflage net makers? Um, and they were asked by the government. They, they were the official camoufla camouflage net makers for the Second World War. There are tales that I hear from different people as I travel around. Um, one was from um, a woman who was a receptionist in a doctor's rooms in those days when they were making the camouflage nets. And the doctor uh, quite agreed and gave her permission to put the camouflage net up over one of the doors as it grew. She was weaving it. And uh, any time that she had in between appointments and had her duties, she could go and weave a few more stitches on the camouflage nets. So CWA, those years, women were very enterprising. And when you stop and think of a women's organisation be the, being the official camouflage net makers for the Second World War, uh, it's rather amazing. It makes some of the things that we do nowadays pale into significance, doesn't it? which is, you know, something you just stop and think about. There were sheepskin vests made for the men in the navies. This was all done by CWA members right round the uh, country. And woolen wear. Members also rendered down fat for sending to Britain, uh, collect when they uh, soap the... Um, soap for Britain because they sent the fat to Britain that was made into soap. They collected rags for cleaning work and sent food parcels and magazines to the fighting forces overseas. Bear in mind this is besides the huge effort that a lot of those women then took over on the land and in their towns because they worked in factories. They worked on the land, their men had gone off to the war, they kept the home fires burning, worked on the land, etc. So women took over what was primarily a men's domain to keep things coming in, to keep things going and to feed their families. There's a tale that Miss R.M. Barnett made 100 pairs of socks on her knitting machine uh, this lady was from Gawler, as you all know. The Barnett Gawler is quite famous, the name. Uh, she used onion skins to dye the wool to produce the khaki colour. So you see how enterprising people were years ago. Quite fantastic, isn't it? Uh, some of the assistance and donations over the years includes equipment for the local hospital. CWA have always been to the fore in donating um, money for special equipment, etc., for the Women's Health Service. When that started up, uh, we donated some furniture. Uh, that's not all that many years ago, that part. Um, there are also many, many other things that they did. They raised funds for any number of fire relief things. There's a huge list in the history book that we have of all the different things that the women around Gawler did for their community. They helped in floods, they raised funds for all manner of things in the local town. Um, many of you would probably be quite familiar with a lot of those things that, that happened then. Um, and also, they not only did that, but they also helped worldwide. They helped Australia-wide. They helped right across the state. When there are floods or fires, they help. And CWA's done that for years. In later years, or you, some of you will probably remember when the lift was proposed for the Institute, CWA gave $1,000 towards the uh, putting in of that lift, etc. 
They also gave $1,000 to the uh, rec centre when that was all extended and the rebuilding of that for crockery and cutlery and furniture. Uh, a huge donation to the Virginia floods. I'm just bringing you up to date with a few things a little bit closer to the era that you would all remember. But over the years, they have donated huge sums of money. This has been made possible mainly by catering. CWA have always probably been known for their cooking. Um, nonetheless, today is what they did then. But that's how they raised the money. And if you can imagine catering uh, in all manner of ways for all different functions, they used to cater. They had a stall for the Gawler three-day horse events when they were held um, around Gawler. There were any number of things that the CWA have catered for over the years and raised funds to then put back into the community in many ways that were needed. Uh, and this is what is done Australia-wide and worldwide because CWA are a uh, constituent society of the Associated Country Women of the World. Uh, and that is over 72 countries in the world actually all belong to the Associated Country of the World and they are in one way or another. They are not all called CWA. In the Women's Institute in uh, UK, it's the Women's Institute in Canada, New Zealand. Uh, other countries have different names for them. But they are all the same as CWA and they are all affiliated with the Associated Country Women of the World. So I don't know if any of you knew that it's actually a, a worldwide organisation. Every state in Australia is autonomous. They run their CWA in every state to their own constitution. There is a national body which uh, deals with the federal government for lobbying. Um, CWA are really, really great at lobbying. Gawler branch members have worked on our social issues uh, team. We've got members here tonight who have been served on that team. I actually served on that team for about eight years. Uh, it's a fantastic way of lobbying the government on things that local communities want, and people right around the state uh, do this. I think the most recent thing was when the amalgamation, proposed amalgamation of emergency services was, uh, and we did a delegation to uh, Parliament House to meet with the ministers to uh, fight for the retainment of the uh, individual uh, essential services, etc. Because that's what the people wanted. People from all around the state wrote to us, the branches, uh, and said that's what they wanted. It went to our state council, and resulting in that, we went to the minister. We've done that a number of times over the years. Um, most times, there's a success rate, not always, but I think when people speak with one voice, and CWA do, right round the state, when they speak with one voice, then you are more likely to be heard. These are just a few little variations, but Gawler members have been involved in all of these things. So I thought tonight, not only about the things that have happened years and years ago, it's important for you to know that the Gawler branch uh, are very, very broadly based, that they uh, delve into a lot of things, um, a lot of things in the association that are there for members. Uh, I brought along a baby parcel, that lovely baby parcel that's up there. Uh, that goes to all around the hospitals in the state on request from social workers for mothers in needy circumstances who have a new baby. There is approximately $180 worth of baby clothes in there and goods, everything that you would need for a newborn baby. Uh, that's come to the Gawler area. I've delivered a few up here over the years. I used to live in the Riverland and uh, I have delivered a few of those around the Gawler area. So I want you to know that the branch here raise funds for your local area. Um, they assist um, with volunteering in lots of areas, but also they donate to some of the state funds and in return those funds come back into your area in some way, shape or form. Um, and I think that's important because people don't always realise that. There are a huge number of things. I could 
go on probably all night and there are many of you here um, who I'm sure have been involved over the years in a lot of the activities of CWA, um, both helping with those activities and as recipients for certain other organisations that you're in uh, as spin-offs from those activities. It is a wonderful thing um, to be able to help people less fortunate than ourselves. Uh, and this is what CWA, am I in your way? No. I said I did say I'd stand over here if you were in, uh, in the way. It is a wonderful feeling to be able to help people less fortunate than oneself. And that is part of what CWA do. We are currently enjoying a wonderful resurgence in membership. We have got many young women. Here in your local area, you are very, very fortunate. We have a new branch all in the last three months. We have a new branch opened at Two Wells, which has never had a branch before. We now have two branches in Gawler. There's always been the traditional branch, which started in 1940. And this year, we have a newly formed evening branch with young, uh, predominantly, not all younger women, but with women who cannot go to meetings during the day. Most of the conventional branches meet during the day, not all of them. There are some night branches who have been going for years. But we are opening all these different branches around the state. And a month ago, we opened a new branch up in the Barossa. There's been a branch at Tanunda for years, and now there's an uh, evening branch, the women of the Barossa. So, this is only a few of what's happened all around the state. There have been other branches open in other areas this year and last year. Uh, and I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough a fortnight ago, I travelled to Sejuna uh, to meet with some of the members over on the uh, western Air Peninsula. I, tra I had dinner on the way over at Woodna at the hotel with the day branch. Um, bless their hearts, those ladies never go out in the evening, uh, but they all but one were able to come to dinner, about 15 of them. And all of the women of the branch that I was fortunate enough to go over there and we opened um, last year, last February, uh, they came along. So the hotel dining room was quite full, with, uh, plus some husbands came along, uh, which was wonderful and that's what happens in a country place. This is just a little snapshot, and I know this happened here years ago. Um, you know, when I hear tales of some of the women that have been passed down to them uh, of what happened in the branch years ago, uh, afterwards you'll be able to come and have a look at some of the photographs. I brought along some photographs and a little bit of memorabilia um, for you to have a look, and just a few of the crafts, not the real latest crafts, but a few that have been done uh, a while back to give you a little bit of an idea that um, women also do craft. They don't only do craft, they uh, do floral art. We have IT workshops. Next week we have a special IT workshop um, for women coming from all parts of the state on Tuesday. Um, we need to, we need to do what women of today want to do. This is terribly important. We use the social media now, whereas years ago all of the minute books were in beautifully handwritten uh, minute books. Absolutely, the writing is fantastic. I do think somewhere along the line we've lost the art of writing. Uh, it is mostly printing or, or typing nowadays. I can remember uh, years ago I lived in an isolated area and I actually had correspondence lessons uh, for the first five years of my life. Um, these lessons used to come in the post once a fortnight and my mother was the supervisor and oh boy was she strict. <laughs> Um, but I still thank her to this day for the effort that she put in to supervising uh, those lessons. These are just a few of the snapshots of what some of the members have done over the years, how they have struggled uh, to help their communities. There's some wonderful tales uh, around Gawler of things that women did, uh, how they did them. Um, and from different areas, and when they meet, they share all these reminiscences uh, of what they used to do. Um, a woman told me not that long ago that she actually went to a meeting on a tractor because of the floods, the creeks came down and she wasn't going to miss her CWA meeting, so she thought, oh, okay, she'd drive the tractor. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is what happens. There are many, many things. Uh, CWA have got a banner. I didn't bring it tonight. Um, 
The CWA new branch banner was done in June 2000. It depicts James Martin, who was the man manufacturer of agriculture, mining and railway machinery, and a politician, of course. He sometimes was referred to as the father of Gawler. Arriving on the 15th of June, 1848, he began business here in Gawler and gradually built it up until he employed over 700 men. That's incredible, isn't it, to think that we had... Uh, employment for over 700 men uh, in one business. It's quite, quite incredible, my goodness me. He was involved in many organisations around the town and was mayor for eight years and went on to be a member of parliament for the area. Uh, it also depicts the different things around the area, the lace work, the cast iron lace work on our beautiful heritage buildings, which I think Gawler is well renowned for. So in the different things that CWA do, even in their banner, they have depicted the early history and the heritage of Gawler because this is what they want to do. They want to retain uh, the wonderful effort that people made uh, when Gawler was first settled and in the early years. And being all inter inter interested in history, uh, I thought you might like to know that that uh, the banner, the CWA banner, really depicts the very early history uh, of the Gawler area, which they are very, very proud to do. There are many other aspects of what's been done over the years. Um, they have done wonderful things in the community as far not only as raising funds, but volunteering. Uh, we are in the state association and all of the branches are a not-for-profit voluntary service organisation. We do not have any government funding. We're completely self-supporting. Uh, and when you stop and think of the amazing things that are done for a lot of the uh, donations, etc., that really is something to be proud of. Some of the more recent ones, which I know you're quite familiar with, are only what's been done for years. We tend to just think of all the ones that we know of now, of the different ones that I mentioned earlier. The recent one was the Pinery Fires, which was too close to home. Um, the year before it was the Sampson Flat Fires. What CWA do and what happens around your own area, the branch here made a significant donation uh, to the Sampson Flat and the Pinery Fires. Something quite significant. They also, the branch did buckets of love with Malala branch and they also cook for Blaze Aid for meals. So it isn't only that they raise funds, they help volunteering to do a lot of these things too. One of the things I think is to make very humbling is that it doesn't matter who it is, we are non party political and non sectarian. And that gives us a broad voice uh, over many, many issues. Not only that, we are all the same. CWA is it's there for women worldwide. We are there as a friendship organisation. The first thing that you say to someone if they'd like to come and visit your branch, and it happens here in Gawler, I can vouch for, the, for that, being a member here, uh, welcome, welcome, come and join us, come and come and visit. There's no pressure, they just come to visit and, and invariably stay because of the warmth, of the welcome, etc. There are many other things I could tell you here tonight, and I'm going to ask now for some participation. There's nothing worse than to just sit and listen to someone that talks all night about what they want to talk about. I'm going to ask some of you here tonight what you, what you felt CWA was all about. What about someone from the back row? What did you actually feel that CWA was about? Did you know or not? Or? Yeah, quite aware of what you were doing. Okay, you thank you. That? Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you very much. No, that is fine. I, we are also aware of what other service organisations do because a community needs every service organisation that can possibly uh, be formed in their area. The more service organisations there are, the richer and the better off your community is. So we are all together and I have over the years really encouraged uh, CWA members to be involved and to work with other service groups and I think we do that very very well here in Gawler. I'm very proud of the Gawler area on how we all do work together. Now anyone here tonight who can think of little anecdotes of the early history of the CWA 
the involvement, etc. I know there's quite a few of you here. And there's some of you that, Nance, you've probably got tales to tell. Cafe. We, CWA, have a country cafe at the Adelaide Show. We are the longest serving, we met with the um, manager of the show yesterday, we are the longest, longest serving caterers at the Adelaide Show, 68 years. We have been providing wonderful meals and refreshments during the Adelaide Show. This happens for 10 days pre-show when everyone's setting up uh, our committee Cafe committee works and provides meals for all those setting up, etc. And then, of course, right through the show. Uh, the ladies go in there about 6.30, the ones that make the scones. Last year, um, the girls baked over 12,000 scones over the 10 days of the show. We would like larger premises, and we're thinking that this might be what we need because there's such a queue outside of our cafe during the show people have to wait for ages to get in to get served we also now hire a marquee uh, have that next to the country cafe to try and cater for families and groups and wheelchairs and babies in pushes etc for family groups so we are continually kind of getting more custom and expanding and people come in and say, oh, we wouldn't go anywhere else to eat. Well, I mean, there are many, many caterers at the Adelaide Show now. You only need to walk around. Uh, but we have such a queue. Our ladies do that. We have about four to 600 volunteers do that. They come from all parts of the state. They come and they perhaps do a couple of days say half a dozen will come from one area and do different shifts. We had a series of cookbooks years ago, uh, and I think in the foreword that I wrote for this, I think it was 1940-something, uh, we uh, started the first cookbook, it used to be calendars, calendar of puddings, calendar of cakes, etc. This one here is a lovely glossy book. Uh, it was only launched last October. We'd sold 2,000 copies by Christmas and we had the first reprint and we've ordered another 3,000 and we're part way through those. Uh, it's available on our website and in uh, some bookshops and of course from us. Um, it is a wonderful book and it, the recipes in there have come from all around the state, from CWA members. Some of the recipes come from some of our very new, younger members too. And this is done in a format. It's done in the four seasons of the year. So you can go to whatever season of the year it is and look for a series of re uh, recipes uh, in fitting with that season of the year. So it's a wonderful effort uh, and that is the calendar of cakes um, new cookbook that we put out uh, in October, which is uh, wonderful. We also have another series of cookbooks. I brought along a packet of scone mix. We're also ent entrepreneurs, you know. We have got scone mix. Our country women's scone mix is baked by Laukies. It's the combination of two, we always say it's the combination of two. Um, well-known South Australian companies. It's the Baked by Laukies and the um, recipes and that are from CWA. That is our Country Women's scone, scone Mix, Baked by Laukies. It's available in some of your supermarkets, also available from the branch here in Gawler, um, but you can get it from the supermarkets. Foodland has it, um, Woolworths, Coles's. Uh, so it is available at the, at the supermarkets. Very easy. I have had gentlemen that have bought these packets of scone mix um, and it's very easy. You just add water and mix as long as you follow the directions on the back. And to complement that for the Adelaide show, we released a quick and easy scone recipe book which makes a fantastic special when we sell the two together. That is sells for $5. That is not available at the bookshops or the... Um, food or these 
supermarkets. That's available from CWA, your local branch, or our state office, or online on our website. All of our cookbooks are available online. Uh, and that has recipes in it, because not only can you make scones out of our scone mix, you can make cakes, you can make slices, um, you can make savoury dishes, all manner of things using that scone mix. So it is quite versatile. And these recipes were all tested by CWA and Lauke's before we uh, produced the cookbook. So yes, that's just another little aside of, uh, of what we do. And we have got something new in the um, air which will very soon be released too. In the cooking field, I can't tell you any more than that, um, but it's another product that we're in the midst of producing. Yes? Uh, you've got your accommodation facilities on. Yes. Yes, I can. We have accommodation premises. Our state office is at 30 Decatable Terrace, Kent Town, uh, where we also we have got a two-storey block administration block. Uh, next to that, there's a wonderful heritage home, which was an original home. Uh, the first person to live in it was one of the uh, early Har uh, Scar uh, Harrises from Harris Scarfs. Uh, they were the very first people that moved into that wonderful house. It is um, hotel-like accommodation, private hotel-like accommodation with shared facilities. There are reception rooms there. Uh, we had open house last weekend and people came back that had had wedding receptions there years ago, came back to have a look, etc. We have open house in History Festival every year uh, for one weekend um, at that place. But it is a wonderful building out the back we have a two-storey block of modern self-contained units. And around the state, we have five holiday cottages at um, waterfront premises, seaside and one up on the uh, Lake Bonnie. We've got one at Beachport, one at um, Barmer on Lake Bonnie. There's one at Port Vincent, Moonta and Tumby Bay. We, and, and Beachport. Oh, did I miss Beachport? Hmm. So that's just another thing that we, that we do. We did have, uh, years ago, many, many CWA halls around the state. We haven't got as many halls as we used to have. Some of them have been handed to the community because some of them were built on um, community land in towns, etc. Some were built on land donated by private individuals. We still have quite a few of those halls. Um, Gawla is lucky. I first started CWA involvement in Wakery and they had their own hall. There are still quite a few uh, around the state. Now a hand was up over here somewhere. Can yes, Marilyn. Can I just get you to talk about our hall and, um, and about the different ones? We've got a lovely hall in Gawla. Yes, there was a... CWA president for Gawla. Yes. general public. Mm. That's a wonderful effort for volunteers at a, uh, at a, at a show, at a, for, for catering. The hall in Reed Street, the first hall that CWA actually saved up, catered, um, saved up the money and built, was in Reed Street, where Big W now stands. Uh, that was on a freehold block, so we did own that, etc. Uh, and we negotiated, as Dr Eastick would realise here, uh, with the council um, in return for that lovely hall, well, the rooms that we had there. We now have the nice modern hall that we have on Todd Street, which is wonderful, absolutely a lovely modern hall. Um, and it is used by other community groups. CWA don't just use the halls for their own meetings they are hired out to other community groups. So it is for the benefit of the community that a lot of these halls are used, not just by CWA, the members of the community benefit by using them too. That uh, hall in Todd Street uh, is used quite well by different community groups, etc., and for a number of different functions. And so are the other halls around the state. 
and also our reception rooms down at Decatur Terrace. Um, we have still have birthday parties and uh, anniversaries and dinners and things down there. Um, that is a really absolutely beautiful building uh, that is. Mind you, it is a challenge for a volunteer organisation to run things like that. It's a challenge for a community group to run a hall, I can tell you. I've been really involved in the Wakery Hall and in the, in the Gawler Hall. Um, it's no easy task for women to run a, a hall and keep it clean and hire it out and keep the maintenance done. And Yes, um, it's one of, those, one of those challenges, but you do it because you're community minded and that's what it's all about. Now, someone else was going to ask something. Someone said that they were, did we have anything to do with the Reed Street? Who was it? Gentleman here somewhere. Was it you, Ray? Yes. yes. First. Hmm, first. Uh, and yes, that's where CWA first built their own hall after using the different rooms that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, the last one was on top of um, Mrs Hogburn's or Mr Hogburn's shop or something. There were a variety of um, different locations that the, first, that the branch first used until they were able to uh, build their hall. And it's interesting because there were quite a few members that went guarantor to buy the block of land and build the hall. So people did things years ago, it absolutely was a community effort. And they did things all around the state like that too. Women would go guarantor, a few of them to raise the money to, to build or do something to their rooms, etc. So it really is something rather special that it is community. And, and that's what it is. And I think here in Gawler we have a, a wonderful uh, community. You are very, very community minded in Gawler, coming from another area. Um, I know the Riverland, I lived in the Riverland for many years and that was a wonderful place to live. But I was quite amazed when I came to Gawler at the number of organisations that there are. Uh, different organisations, different service groups. We have worked here with Rotary, very, very proud of what we've been able to assist with Rotary, um, with Apex. Uh, with all different groups uh, in, in, the, in the town, with, and Zonta, together with Zonta for the Australia Day uh, breakfasts, etc., and any number of different things. And that's what women do. Women club together as well as the men. There's, the men and women of Gawler are wonderful. They are really community-minded. Uh, and I must acknowledge that because uh, it's a wonderful area to live in. Uh, as far as the community goes. And I've always been interested in your history group here of the different subjects that you delve into. And of course some of our members have always been involved and um, that keeps us in touch too. Uh, but you are a special group uh, yourselves, being involved in the, in the history, etc. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I would like to tell you that you're not going to get bored with. There's nothing worse than... Yes, Marilyn? Yes. And going through the different stages. Stages. And then, first refrigerator was exciting in a minute. Yes. And going from the treadle machine to the automatic machine, and we forget about these things. We do. But Absolutely. It's a part of life, but mm -hmm. women have got together and got excited about a new electric appliance. Mm -hmm. That's that right. Come, and then the microwave, but in the, reading the minutes, how they just got excited, especially the first refrigerator was yeah. really exciting in the minute. So. Yes, that's what happens. I mean, you do. I can remember when, the, uh, when I was young and we got our first kerosene refrigerator on the farm because I lived on the farm. And it wasn't any different in the towns. There wasn't, you know, electricity in lots of towns for years and years. It, it's just how we lived. Uh, and it was the same here in, in Gawler in the early days. Um, it, it's all through all of the history books, not only CWA, but it's through the history books of how people got excited with every new thing that came out. Yes? Why is it called Country Women's Association? Can't city folks join? <laughs> yes, we have lots of branches in the city. We have a new branch at Decatable Terrace with 60 odd members. Uh, we've got a new branch down at Lucendale too, but we have quite a lot of branches in around the metropolitan area. It's country as in the country 
uh, Australia, South Australia. Um, it's not particularly for country women. The third branch that was ever formed was the Metropolitan Branch back in 1930, um, I think that was formed, 29. Um, there was Borough Branch, the Spalding Branch, then Metropolitan Branch. And they used to meet in Craven's store where Target now is. Some of you would remember Craven's store uh, in Rundall Street as it was then. And that's where CWA met for quite a few years, the Metropolitan Branch. That's where the first one was. We have got branches all around the metropolitan area. So, uh, yes, a lot of people still say, well, I didn't know that you had uh, branches in, uh, in the metropolitan area, but yes, we do, yes. And it was amazing years ago when they met in Cravens, the uh, metropolitan branch, uh, all through the war, all of the war effort, and Cravens let them have that for nothing, no charge. They provided them with this lovely room and space to meet and do a lot of their war effort activities um, in around the city, which was fantastic. So it's a community effort. It isn't just that it's um, CWA, yes, they've had the voice and they have done the work, but they've had a lot of assistance through other community-minded people too, which we must acknowledge, which is very, very special. Now, someone else was going to... Yes? Were the Green and Gold cookbooks yours? No. No, the Green and Gold cookbooks were not ours. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they were every country person's Bible, a Green and Gold cookbook. Yes, my goodness me. Yes. Did you? So it was called the CWA. That's interesting. That's the first time I've heard that. Well, for goodness sake. Amazing. Goodness. Yes. Well, and did you know that this year, uh, every three years, there is a conference, the Associated Country Women of the World Conference, and representatives go from all of the 70-odd countries, mostly there, most of them are all represented. Um, South Australian CWA always have representatives there. We had five this year going, and it's in the UK. Three years ago, it was in India. It's in a different country each year. Uh, this year it's in the uh, UK at the Warwick University, University in Coventry. Hmm. So, yes, I just thought you might be interested to hear that. For goodness sake, yes. Have you been successful in keeping male members out of the CWA? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a lot of us couldn't do what we do without the male members, the unofficial male members, I tell you. <laughs> We couldn't do, um, it doesn't matter what person is in anything, if they have a partner, uh, you need some support home, my goodness me. But we do have um, men now, not only gentlemen, but any business person or individual, including males, can become friends of the CWA. So we have created an avenue for, um, for gentlemen to be able to be friends of the CWA. And of course there are benefits of, of uh, special rates for accommodation and different things and, and we have a lot of gentlemen that stop and family groups that stop at our um, accommodation, Adelaide and everywhere. Uh, men can come and stop. We have quite a few people that come regularly. Um, business people or people with have, uh, family or friends in hospitals or just travelling through. You never know who you're going to be sitting next to at breakfast. Uh, it can be someone from the UK, it can be someone from uh, any of the countries overseas or whatever. Very interesting. You never know who, you, who, who you're going to meet. It's wonderful. Now, any other questions? We do, we do have men on our outings as well. <laughs> Beg your pardon? We do have men on our outings as well. Yes, oh yes, yes. The activities include, you know, men for dinners and outings and, and whatever. We have some of our men folk drive their wives. Um, there are quite a few still that drive their wives to uh, meetings and outings and, and that. So we have one gentleman that brings his wife to Metropolit um, Metropolitan Branch because they now meet at Decatable Terrace and he comes along each time. It's wonderful and brings his wife. And sits at the back of the room. So, I mean, he knows what happens at CWA anyway, but he sits there and reads. Um, no, it is, it is a... It doesn't matter what 
service organisation you're in. Uh, if you're a male, it's the women folk at home that support you, etc. Uh, if you're a woman, it's the men folk at home. If you've got a partner that supports you, you know, it's a it's a twofold thing. They're either your secretary answering the phone and taking down appointments, or they're um, they're involved. It cuts both ways. It's a it's a a thing that it takes both people to make it work. Anything else? The Gawler Group in the Day Branch is approximately 50, and there's about 30, 25, 30 in the new group, which has only been started a few weeks. Hmm. It varies. The two largest branches in the state at the moment are the Deketaville Branch. They've only been going two years. They have, I think they said 65. The Limestone Ladies, the new branch that started at Narracourt last year, there were two branches there now, they have got 70 members. We had 51. When, we went, when I went down to Narracourt to the public meeting, we hold public meetings around the state, uh, and I travel wherever there's a public meeting and talk to people. Uh, we promote it first on social media and the local papers and whatever, wherever else we can do it. Um, and there were 51 young women turned up. We were rustling around at the narrow court branch rooms to find enough chairs. So uh, amazing. And the things that they are doing in that community, those younger women, is just absolutely fantastic. They're raising funds, they're providing equipment for in their community, uh, different things. Um, absolutely amazing. We need to have new members coming into anything, and I say that to you all. There are people from other organisations here tonight to survive and to keep vibrant and to do, because some of us are starting to get a bit tired, you know. We've done this for a great number of years, and you can't keep on at the pace that you used to. Uh, you, need, you need younger people coming on and new members to provide enthusiasm and also do different activities. Things aren't the same as what they used to be. We need to do different things. We're living in a different time um, and that is the same. And I'm looking around here at a lot of you here. The history tells us that. Over the years, when Marilyn said it was amazing how every new thing that came out years ago, a, a electric sewing machine or a mix master or whatever it was, was a new invention and it was fantastic. Well, this is still happening. Only you tend to kind of think of the things we've used all the time and then something new comes out and you think, oh, okay. But this is progress and, and this is what happens. Uh, and I always liken it to our families because you have a family and then they grow up and carry on and they do things differently. Uh, my family all do things vastly differently to what I do. Now I'm having a smile because their families are doing things differently to what they do it too. So it's progress, isn't it? Now, some other comments. Yes, Nance? I don't know whether you realise that Smithfield started in 1938 yes. and that comprised Smithfield, Salisbury, Virginia, Amazing. See, this is what happened years ago. Nance was just saying that the Smithfield branch, because um, Nance Frisbee was a member of Smithfield, started in 1938, and that encompassed, encompassed a whole area. Well, then as time went on, a lot of those other places had branches start too. So this is what happens. It just kind of spreads, doesn't it? Um, it's the same as, you know, your history groups. There's more history groups now than I think there's ever been. People are appreciating the heritage and the history uh, of our forebears, and they're celebrating it too, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, someone else liked to share some of the earlier things, because I wanted this to be something like a forum that we could all chat about it together. Any? We, yes, we also produce calendars. We have The last one we did was a two-year calendar, which finishes the end of this year. Um, CWI have done a lot of different things. You tend to take it for granted. Um, just one of the things that, Nance, if you don't mind, I'm going to touch on a little bit what happened in the droughts. I was very involved years ago in some of the droughts, particularly in the Riverland uh, in the early 1980s. The drought was so bad, there was no feed in the paddocks, and when you drive from Wakery up to Berry, 
a lot of the, up towards between Wakery and Kingston. The fences were all covered. The sand just blew and blew and completely covered the fences. Uh, that's how bad the drought was. CWA during that time, and they have done it previous years, there are notes in the history about uh, Mrs Dolling travelling all over the country in the early droughts. It was a drought in the very early years too, as you would all know, the depression uh, in the 40s. That was not good. But in the 19, early 1980s, it was dreadful, absolutely. Um, we sent linen parcels, we provided food parcels for people on blocks, etc. in the country. Um, I delivered a lot of those food parcels in the Riverland out to country people. Country people will not ask for help. And it is very sad because we are all very proud, I know, but we used to hear of people that really needed some help and we would always buy, um, I would buy the groceries in the local town to help the businesses uh, and then those parcels would be delivered out discreetly, just quietly um, to a farmhouse that you knew were really struggling, etc. We provided linen parcels. Uh, we used to, I was very heavily involved at our state office back in those years, and we used to buy the material, the sheeting, in bulk lots. And then we would uh, cut it all out into sheet lengths and pillar slips, etc., um, and do it and pack it all, and we'd deliver linen parcels, food parcels and linen parcels, to people in the country during those droughts. So that's another thing that we did. We kind of just did it quietly, uh, but we went all around the state with it. Uh, and that's another thing that CWA uh, have done over the years. There are many other things that we still do. Nance Frisbee here was very busy at that time because we provided um, toys for people in the country for Christmas. There was no money. People couldn't buy toys for their children. CWA did up parcels and packs and they went discreetly out to and Nance Frisbee uh, used to come to state office and help pack those toys. That's just another little thing that CWA have done over the years that probably, unless you're talking to people and discussing like we are tonight, that it's not, not really broadcast. We also um, provide this year we helped 21 students around the state and a lot of this comes from the branch here. They help with donations to a lot of these, it's our Dorothy Dolly Memorial Trust Fund uh, which was started by members of a family of a very early um, wonderful member of CWA and that was set up with CWA, that family and CWA as a trust fund. And every year there are financial grants given to country students. This is only for country students. Uh, this year we helped 21 country students from all around the state uh, to further their education. We also have an emergency aid fund. Uh, that is an ongoing thing today. The state treasurer and myself today sat down with this week's uh, applications. These applications come in from um, social workers and case workers um, around, all around the state, uh, for assistance for their clients. A lot of them, um, some of them are family violence, some of them are things beyond their control and they cannot pay for something, uh, they cannot, cannot buy something. Um, we give preference to women and children because that's one of our objectives, etc. That's an ongoing thing. And our branches give donations, that's how that works. They give the donations that keep this going. We are a little bit similar to the Wyatt Trust. You'll know the Wyatt Trust. Well, Wyatt Trust and CWA are two of the um, longest running and main ones that um, help in that way. That's just another little way. There's quite a lot of other things that we do, but they are just a few things that... And the branch here helps with that. They raise funds and they help you in your own community, but they also help like that uh, in the broader community that goes round. And everyone here tonight, you know, what comes round goes round, and when you help people, inevitably some of it comes back to the area here. Uh, I do, can vouch for that. So it's one of those things that 
Um, it's statewide. It's statewide. It's worldwide. We even have a international committee who help in the South Pacific area. Um, that's a special committee that does that in there. So there are many facets of CWA other than your local branch, the face of your local branch that you all know so well. There's all these other things that go on behind the scenes which probably um, a lot of you didn't know until tonight. Any other questions? Yes. You're aware of the history of the new the new hall here. The, no, the, the one that uh, you've got down in Yes, the, yes we... The whole of the, just filling in the whole of the uh, area which is uh, currently the CWA yes. and the new development down to Cameron Street was a quarry. Yes. Which was full before the house was built, before the building was built. Yes had to be cleaned out of old motor car bodies and rubbish and so forth. So it was quite a massive task yes. to shift you from Reed Street down to where we are now. The current site. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Easter. Yes, I wasn't going to mention that. I didn't know whether it was the right thing <laughs> right thing to do. Uh, but yes, I we are very, very much aware of that. And we are very happy uh, where we are. It's a, it's a lovely hall uh, and other groups, community groups that come there and people that hire it for different things all say the same. Um, yes, it's very nice. We're very happy. And the uh, development adjacent to you was uh, built by Mr Westman, who was a guest speaker here only a matter of a few weeks ago. Well, on the same. That is wonderful, yes. Goodness me. Now, see, this is what you do when you kind of say, well, I want this like to be like a forum after I've spoken a little while. It's wonderful and it's sharing. It's sharing the history together of what we're all about. And it's amazing what comes up at places. I don't like going when I'm talking to a community group like yourselves tonight, just and talk about what I'm familiar with, etc. Uh, I like people to join in because everyone learns so much more and it's more personal because you, someone sitting next to you will know something that someone else doesn't and that's what makes it special. Um, it, it's really, any other questions or anything else you want to talk about? Otherwise, we'll, I don't want to keep it going and then you're not enjoying it. So, any other queries? Yes, Nancy? Nancy? I work at the Surrey Cafeteria and I don't work um, back to back days, I always have at least a day in between and um, most times go down on the train and have to be down there by 9 o'clock or half past 9 in the morning and um, I help the scone maker and I love doing it and we've got an automatic mixer and you can hear all day, you can hear this tuck 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 going this mixer and then they get it out and just um, give it a little bit more work and then we've got to cut the scones out and um, th there's an oven that's going all the time with about at least 10 trays in it and um, they come out the, and the, um, the main cooksy slides the, the um, scones onto a table near me and I've got to sort them because some of them go over to the um, cheap pavilion, the seat pavilion and um, some uh, go on plates and I cover the plates with them on and they have the jam and the cream there that uh, people can put on, put the, um, uh, on the scones. Um, but, um, and usually you have some cool days in the show so it's quite warm up there working there because they're making soups and doing all sorts of cooking um, and there's something going all the time and some some men come up and they help some husbands and they cut up the vegetables and peel them. And um, some, uh, some, and some of them wash the big trays and the big saucepans. They can't go in the dishwasher that's um, actually downstairs. Um, but um, and we have a um, a system called a dumb waiter, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That um, we can send things down on, and everything runs smoothly as long as the dumb as long as it's, it's operated yeah. correctly. Um, we have a lot of men folk that help during the show. 
uh, we have a lot of the general public, people that volunteer to help just during the show. We've got some of the politicians um, that help during the show. Some of the, the politicians are individual members because you don't only have branch members with CWA, you can have individual members and this is for business, business women um, and women who work and before we had a lot of the evening branches. So we've got quite a few of the politicians. Uh, the uh, Premier's wife, she worked, works at the show, comes down and helps, etc. And quite a few of the other well-known business people and identities come and help uh, during the show because they say that's one thing that they can do. They can have a day um, away from business or something just to feel as though that they are doing something to actually help. Yes, so it's, it wouldn't work without the community. It's another community thing. I think, Ray, that's probably enough. I think people would like to come up and have a look at the photographs um, and ask any questions. If there's any questions, we can answer for you. Um, and can I just say, your history group are lovely. A lot of, a lot of faces... <laughs> oh, they all are. A lot of faces here tonight that I know. Thank you, Linda. 